All right. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to ESOMS Engineering for another edition of our MIT App Inventor uh, trek through the CSP curriculum and PLTW. So we're here, and this time we're in activity 124. 124 is called Analyzing a Program Using MIT App Inventor. In this case, we're now going to analyze the program and take a look at the variable roles that we learned back in our Scratch unit, and we're going to utilize uh, MIT App Inventor to, uh, for that purpose. So uh, before you start this activity, make sure you download the source files here. And there's also a blocks document that kind of break down some of the uh, programming blocks that you will need for this, uh, for this activity. You can see here there's a couple of specific areas uh, and codes, modified modifications and things for you to look through. And obviously, this is quite a bit of code. But this particular section is kind of a reference for when you're or where you need to go in the program to activate certain uh, certain features or certain areas of our, of our uh, activity. So let's take a look at this activity. So we downloaded the source files. I've already extracted them. And make sure, that, again, if you're using the Windows Explorer option, just to, to extract the files to a directory where you're going to be using them, make sure, perhaps maybe on the desktop or something, just make sure they're extracted point, uh, uh, to make sure that you have the, uh, have the files available. OK. So we go to MIT App Inventor. I already have MIT App Inventor open here on another screen. And I've actually, let's go to there. This is the uh, color chooser from our previous activity. So we're going to import a new project. In this case, those source files are all AIA files, App Inventor 2. And they're called bounce ball. And we're going to introduce the first bounce ball file as our project. We'll hit open. And we hit OK. And it will add that project to my library. And there are. Uh, there is my uh, interface. So let's take a look at the activity, and we'll go down here. So, OK, we open the project, open the program, open the uh, programs in GUI Designer View, choose blocks, and switch to the blocks editor. OK, so we'll do that. All right, so we're going to go to the blocks, and it's going to eventually, eventually, there it is. There's our blocks. OK, compare the behavior of the app to your Android device, what you see on the block screen in App Inventor. Analyze the program in the following steps. There are many global variables in this program. Each one is created by a single block as shown below. A global variable can use to be any part of the program. How many global variables are there? So the one option that you have is obviously to go into App Inventor and go up to the top of the program, which is where the blocks are. And you'll see that there is a set of variables all here. There looks like there's three, there's seven, there's 12 global variables. And if we look here, we can actually see that this is all stages, right? Just to kind of compare this, uh, all stages of the of the program. As you notice, we have different stages of the program that are that are added on little by little. Uh, this particular uh, table here shows us that, our, that there's 20, but this version here has 12, so 12 global variables. And remember, a global variable, what is it? We can click the vocab, and we can see that it's a variable that's used in any part of a program. This is going to be important, especially when you're doing Python, because we have things broken down into multiple modules, even in Scratch when you have things broken down into multiple sprites and areas. Uh, sometimes you want variables that are usable or, or uh, callable, as the uh, vocab goes, to uh, any routine or area of your program. So a global variable can be used anywhere, anytime. The larger chunks of blocks are procedure definitions or event handlers. Okay, So let's take a look at those definitions, those new vocab words. right? A procedure definition is identifying a chunk of code that will be reusable anywhere else in the program by calling its name. So think of it as if you've ever played a role-playing game before, anytime there's a battle, that battle is usually in a procedure or, or set. So the game or the program will just say, OK, time for a battle, and it will call the battle procedure. And then the screen will, will distort and change to a battle screen, and you'll take care of your battle. And then after your battle, whoop, back to the world map. So the same kind of idea, right? So a procedure is any time we want that to happen, whoop, there we go. Okay. The other possibility is that it's an event handler. We already know what an event handler is because we did Scratch. But an event handler is basically something that's executed when there is a specific set of input or a specific condition uh, is, is satisfied. So in this case, uh, event handlers typically are from used from sort of user input. So the larger blocks are either those two. Procedure blocks begin with two and have the procedure name as shown in the figure below. Look through the code and find and fill in the name of this procedure. So you'll see here to find and fill in the name of this procedure. So let's go ahead and find that, right? So we see that right here, OK, the name of this procedure, OK? So the name of this procedure is post scores, OK? In this case, let's check this here, right? Input inputs, OK. So in this case, uh, look through the code and find and fill the name of this procedure, OK? So to post scores. This particular procedure, it looks to me like it's it's basically what is the 
uh, what is the score, what is the, yeah, that's pretty much it, yeah. It's basically just doing a, a scoring, in this case, global colors click, uh, call canvas ball bounce, uh, get the global values, select item from list, so, you know, it's pretty much that kind of, that kind of thing. Right. Let's see here. Okay. The other large chunks are event handlers. These tell the program what to do when you use another program. Um, like a mouse click to occur, this event is described after the period. In the name of the block, look through the code and fill in the names of when events that are being handled by the chunks of code below. So we go, we have things that are basically grayed out here. You'll notice that there are things that are grayed out on that spot. And so if we go back to our code, when dot initialize is an example, okay? So in this case, when screen one initializes, right? So that would be screen one. And then if we find each of those other event handlers, ball bounce.edge reach, that's right there. And we can find the other areas all in the screen as well. So that's just basically a matching spot, right? And then there's blanks for you to fill out there as well. Choose one block of code that is accounting for some behavior. Discuss with your partner what parts of the block you think are accounting for the aspects of that behavior, okay? So now this, you wouldn't be able to answer this question unless you were live testing. The, um, the program. I just want to show you really fast how you would do that uh, very simply. If we go to the connect option here and we go to AI companion, this gives you a QR code that you can scan with your Android device using the camera QR code scanner um, in MIT App Inventor, uh, I believe in the companion there's also a QR scanner. So you just basically scan this code and it will connect your device to the screen which will allow you to live test the app so you can kind of figure out and from that option from that area figure out what blocks are kind of setting and taking care of what areas mm -hmm. this program may look difficult it might because it's got a lot of blocks and it's got a lot of code but it really is not too bad when you get to run the program itself you'll see that you know what what procedures are governed or working with what which areas so it's not too bad it's not too bad okay variable roles in app inventor to program, the, the program you just exam, examined is the final version of a program that went through many stages of modification in order to get its current form. Now we'll acquire bounce ball stage one and open it in App Inventor in the same manner as described in steps two through six. So remember those steps are this. We go to projects, we go to import project from uh, AIA file, we go choose file. We are going to this time open up the bounce ball stage one. Okay, and you see there's a, a bunch of stages here. So we open up bounce ball stage one. And again, this is a, something that we could live test. Okay, right now this looks to me like if we look at the components of this, it's just a canvas and it's a ball bounce. And this ball bounce here is uh, a feature that's on the canvas. And it's obviously something from the blocks. So if we go to the blocks, we can see that this is really it. This is, this is exactly uh, what we're looking at here. So our goal in this section here is to figure out what variable role each variable plays in our program. Okay. If we go here, we just see there's two variables, direct, direction and to flip. So if we look at direction, direction is initialized at 180, right? And so you might be thinking like, oh, 180 is going to be some sort of fixed value. But just because it's initialized at a value doesn't mean that that's going to stay that value, right? So you have to look in the program block to see if there's any changes to it. And it looks to me like there is. It says here, set ball bounce heading to get global direction, right? But over above here, it says set global direction to get global direction plus get global flip, global to flip, right? So it actually is changing, especially if you live test this, you'll see that the ball, the ball does change direction uh, on, on your screen. So obviously, this is not something that's set, okay? It's something that does change. So global, initialized global, is a, is a most recent variable. It's something that is changed. However, in this set of blocks here, the to flip variable, which is also initialized at 180, that variable does not change because you'll see that only global direction has a set procedure. And then here you have set ball bounce heading to the get global direction. This obviously here is an object that's moving on, on the screen. So when you live test this, you can also kind of change that, right? If you initialize and change the global direction, you'll actually get the ball to bounce off the screen. So be careful with that. Okay, so that concludes it for this particular part of the video. Um, you'll notice that the rest of the activity kind of goes through different stages of it and also introduces new vocabulary. So do pay attention to the vocabulary, okay? There's actually quite a few new terms in this particular activity. Pseudo-random, 
concatenation, padding, and then you kind of do the same thing. You're just basically uh, learning about different variable roles, okay, within the program. So take your time with that, talk to your partners, and just for this activity, at least for my class, if you're watching this from my class, you are not doing the extension, so don't worry about the extension, okay? All right, have a nice day, everybody. Don't forget to be awesome.